Oh, pre-calculus students. There is no section 6.8 in our textbook, but we covered the dot product in uh, section 6.7. So we're going to do a 6.8, which is the vector cross product. Now, as you can see what's on your screen, that A dot B can go by any of these three names, but we always say A dot B. That's how you say that. It's not times. Um, that will always give you a constant. And we've already um, worked enough of those problems that you know that's the case. And when we first introduced these um, vectors, I told you that there was also, I asked the question, what does it mean to multiply two vectors? And I said, well, it doesn't really mean anything. There's two things that are kind of sort of multiplying. There's a dot product and a cross product. The dot product gives you a constant. The cross product gives you a third vector. How does that work? Let's see. With my wonderful artistic ability. So here's A and B. They're on a plane, maybe the table. And if you cross A and B, actually, I think I drew this wrong. I think if we crossed A and B in this case, A cross B would go down. It would be perpendicular to the plane, but it would be downward. Um, but either way, A cross B, the cross product, is going to be a vector that's perpendicular to both original vectors and it's uh, perpendicular to the plane containing those vectors. This is my shortest video ever probably because here I'm going to show you how to find a vector cross product. Let's say I have vector A and vector B. Now, in class, I've said that there are times where we want to write vectors in ordered pair form and times when we want to write them in sum of unit vector form. This is one of those times where we're going to write them, where we're going to need i, j, and k. Because the mnemonic device for remembering how to calculate the cross product of two vectors is you write i, j, and k across the top, and if you're doing A cross B, you write A first and then B, kind of in ordered pair, ordered triple form here. And then, see how I've written this as kind of like a matrix? What does it mean when we put those absolute value signs around a matrix? Think about it for a minute. What does that mean? It means we're going to calculate the determinant of that matrix. So the way I taught you to calculate determinants, remember uh, sine element minor. So it's plus minus plus going across the uh, top. So it's plus, and we take out the row and the column there, down minus up, two minus negative one, which is three. So that's three I, and then it's minus, Down minus up, three minus negative two is five. The so minus five J, the negative comes from the plus minus plus. And then it's gonna be a plus negative three minus negative four. Negative three minus negative four is positive one. So plus K. So this vector should be perpendicular to both of these. And let's check. 9 minus 10 is negative 1, plus 1 is 0. OK, dot product is 0. So this new vector is perpendicular to A. Let's confirm it's perpendicular to B. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1, plus 1 is zero. So sure enough, this vector is perpendicular to both of these, and hence it's perpendicular to the plane that contains both of them.
That's how you find the cross product of vectors. Have a great day. I can't figure out how to stop this. There we go. Now have a great day.